Mundy, the rabble rouser who would be king. No one is quite sure where he came from, least of all me, but arrive he did. I have always suspected that before a taxi came along to live with me, that its first 38 years were spent on a remote island where only the crudest of men live, and the observance of societal norms or manners were non-existent. Or maybe it grew up with the pathologically, psychologically, seriously whacked out dictator. Or maybe it was just a little both. I don't even know what it went by before it came to live with me. I'll probably never really know, but whatever the truth may lie, doesn't really matter anymore. The it that I have been forced to live with and am referring to now has come to be known as SCA. However, lately I have come to refer to it as a him. This is because in my last blog, giving him his own persona is how I associate it with my handicap. It struck me the other day that even the most vile of criminals and villains have names, and so it always seemed appropriate for me to give my personal neurological thorn to have a name also. And once that was decided, I really took the task seriously. I pondered, I paced, I meditated. I wanted a name that would perfectly sum up his persona in one simple phrase. I enumerated, I struggled mentally, and I reached for that perfect name. And then three seconds later, I landed on the name Brutus the Crippler, or the Crip for short. He really hates when I call him that, but it seemed fitting. I mean, the guy's an animal, a brute with absolutely no compassion. Of course, I would rather giving him a name that is meek and gentle like Brian the Compassionate or Bert the Humble. I would even have settled for a feminine companion like Grace or Faith. It seems to me that having an SCA associated with a female characteristic might at least gain me a fraction of a chance that there might be an apology issued as she joyf- joyfully and without abandon pushed me down the stairs. As is the case right now though, My only companion during my long and bumpy flight down those stairs is remorseless laughter. I also have a very strong feeling that the crip didn't just happen upon me by chance. I think that he studied me before his actual physical arrival, and he strongly believed that I would be susceptible and destructive to his destructive ways. But this is where I believe that I can turn the tables on him. Because I don't think that Brutus was counting on the fact that I would in turn study him and discover that he has a predictable pattern. For example, what I found to be the case is that the faster I try to do something, the harder that task will become. And suddenly I will find myself engaged in a physical loop where I just quickly keep going through the same small motions. And I think Brutus wants it to be that way. Everything from putting a key in a keyhole, to trying to tie my shoes, to quickly sliding my feet into slippers so that I can go outside. I just keep missing the mark, and the more I try, and the more frustrated I get, the worse my overall attitude and outlook becomes. Brutus knows this, and his objective is to get me so worked up and tired of trying that I'll just give up completely. He wants me to stay in a frenzied loop. But instead, I choose to break that cycle and his will by stopping, taking a deep breath, refocusing, and trying again. Refocusing does not necessarily mean that my muscles will coordinate any better or that I may still have, you know, I may still have a difficult time. But I had to let the crypt know that he is not the one in charge. He may want to be. And sometimes it may appear like he is getting closer to being the one who calls all the shots. But he is not. Ataxia comes to us in many different forms with many different personalities. Some are big brutes like my guy, and some are just a little more subtle. Their goal, however, is a unified one. To make life miserable and to make us want to give up by throwing in the towel and wanting to quit. And to do that, Every one of them, the ataxias, does the predictable by going after us physically. 
But I'm here to remind you that in order for it to touch your spirit, to take away your ability to love, your ability to show compassion, and to allow the feeling of joy to spread from you to others, a taxi first needs your permission. Hey, a taxi does not respect you, nor does it need your sin to take away the physical. However, it does need your permission to steal, to redefine, and to reshape who you really are. And I, for one, am not going to give that rabble rouser Brutus permission. And my deep desire for you, my friends, is that you will not give yours permission either.